Hello, hello. So today we're going to take a look at the Airbus A321. So the 321 actually began life as an Airbus A320, which first flew in 1987. A few years later, Airbus designed and built a stretched version of that plane, which is the Airbus A321. The 321 is a short to medium range, narrow body jet, which can carry up to 236 passengers and was built as a competitor to the Boeing 757. Due to this plane being developed much later than the 757, Airbus designed the cockpit with modern technology in mind, including things like glass panels, fly-by-wire controls and other computer-controlled systems. This is a contrast to the Boeing 737, for example, which has been in service longer but has been retrofitted with new technology. The newer, more modern Airbus makes for a much more automated experience when flying, so let's jump in and take a look. So the first thing you'll notice is that the cockpit of this plane looks much cleaner than the 737. You have three glass panel displays which dominate your view and very little in the way of additional switches and indicator lights. So rather than highlight each section, it's going to be easier for me to simply run through everything during a live recording. Okay, and here we are in the plane, live. So, um... Starting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the left hand side and just kind of work my way across the kind of the bottom part of the panel first and then uh, we'll look at some of the other 2D uh, panels which are available in this plane as well. So first one on the left is of course your primary flight display. Now you'll notice there's a few blank sections up above there. What will happen is you'll get little notification messages will pop up in these sections uh, as you fly and I'll demonstrate that uh, in a couple of minutes when I look at the autopilot section of this panel. Next up you have your navigation panel here and similar to the 737 this is controlled by this kind of s sort of smaller panel here and a lot of options here so uh, again once I kind of roll around to that I'll uh, do a demonstration there. Next up you have a cluster of standby instruments so you've got your uh, speed, altimeter, attitude and uh, navigation, VOR and ADF. And then on the right hand side you've got uh, an engine display with also fuel displays and your flaps indicators. Now any um, kind of warning messages that you'll receive will come down in these sections here or will show up in these sections just down here. So here you have the autopilot panel. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of kind of buttons missing on these. You know you don't have like a, a heading enable and disable. To enable some of the functions, what you have to do is actually push the button, uh, like kind of push the button into the panel for it to select. So if we set this to runway heading, for example, and then just click on the center of the button, you see it pushes in there. And now, if we have a look at the primary flight display, you can see that we've got a green HDG indicator there. So that's telling me that the heading hold has been enabled. Now. It's the same with any other plane. The autopilot master switch has to be enabled for the other functions to work, but that's where you can see if it's enabled or not. And then you've got a couple of other options here, such as ILS to uh, enable your ILS uh, sort of dots on the uh, primary flight display there. And then you've got an approach hold, a localizer hold, and your auto throttle is that there. And then this finally, this small panel. Um, mainly, most of the functions here relate to your navigation display. So you've got um, the range there that you can set, and then you can s change what is viewed or what is displayed on the, um, or kind of in the background there. So you can have airports, you can have NDBs, you can have VORs, waypoints, and then CSTR. I I was looking this up earlier on in the week and I found out what CSTR means uh, but I can't remember what it is now. Regardless, you cannot click on it in this uh, cockpit so there's no need to worry about that there. And then just next to that there, you've got actually this uh, knob which is quite handy. So you can change the kind of the view or the, uh, the kind of the instruments that this displays. So you can have like an arc there or you can have a horizontal situation indicator or a VOR needle, or you can have like an ILS system there as well. So it's quite a, a nifty little. Um, there's quite a lot that you can you can do with that there. Um, and the last sort of function here is uh, obviously your barometric pressure, which you can set to 
inches of mercury there and then rotate the grey knob to change it. You can also see what it reads down here. Or alternatively, if you hit the kind of black outer ring, you can change that to HPA, Hector, Pascals, I think it is, which is millibars. And then if you want to change it to standard, again, you just click the center of the, uh, the grey knob there and that will just revert it back to standard. And you can see STD down here, standard pressure. So that's pretty much the main panel covered. Um, the only other thing here is your nav GPS switch. There, you've got a master warning and a master caution light there as well, but um, they don't bring up a 2D panel, they're just kind of advisory lights. <coughs> um, okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the throttle panel next. So, um, mo you'll probably, this will all probably look familiar now. Um, you've got your two trim wheels on either side, you've got two throttle levers, um, you've got a speed brake lever here, you've got your engine starter switches here. Now all of the um, sort of the engine management is automatic in this plane so there's no uh, like enabling an engine starter, ena enabling an engine ignition switch and then enabling the fuel flow, it's all controlled through these um, through these two switches here. Uh, you've got a flaps lever here you got a rudder trim there, parking brake, and an emergency landing gear uh, lever. I'll show you where the, the main lever is in a second. Looking at the overhead panel, very similar to the planes that we've seen before. Um, every kind of system has is broken down into its own sort of sub panel. Um, so what is actually starting to right and then go to the left because there's a cool thing on the left up here that I'll talk about. So you've got your hydraulics up here flight control here so you've actually got computers which control the uh, the flight control surfaces because this aircraft uses what's called a fly-by-wire system basically you don't have a yoke or there's, there's basically there's no physical link between the controls in the cockpit and the uh, aircraft surfaces like the ailerons and the um, elevator on the, the tail um, so what happens is the pilot will move a joystick a computer it kind of interprets that movement and then moves the uh, the control surfaces as it sees fit basically so you can enable all of those um, or you can enable some of those flight computers here they've got another identical set well not identical but another few buttons there which do the same job you've got fuel uh, pumps here I believe they are and then you've got some anti-ice and pitot probe heat there uh, bottom center you've got your external lights all here APU start button and then you have a few internal light switches there in the middle you've got um, your air conditioning so what's known as bleed air you've got all your controls for that there and then up top you've got fire extinguisher handles up there on the left you've got your electrical panel uh, again your flight controls there and then you've got this little system up here which is called ADERS. Now I can't remember what this, uh, the long name of this is, but it's basically it's a quite a cool little computer to have on your overhead panel. What this does is this displays uh, several pieces of uh, information. So at the moment this is at T TKGS, so this is displaying my track and my ground speed. If we roll the knob around you can see it gives me my GPS coordinates. And then if I roll it around again, it will give me the wind direction, or sorry, the wind speed and the wind or direction. At the moment, it's just set to zero zero because I've just got fair weather set. But obviously, if you've got, you know, some sort of weather enabled, you know, it'll display the uh, information in there, which is pretty cool. And then you can turn it on and off with that. Um, let's see, let's see what's useful next. The radio stack is quite uh, unique in this aircraft, so you can see here. Now we've only got two frequencies when we're used to seeing maybe a group of about five so to change between the frequencies what well basically you've only got you've got your active and you've got your standby one which you can change there but if you want to change rather than looking at your communication radios and maybe want to look at your nav you just hit the nav button there and then these are your nav one sort of settings these are your nav two settings so if I for example, if I roll this down to the Inverness VOR quickly, we should see if I... There we go. So you can see that 
that does all of that there. So that's how you switch between your communication frequencies and your navigation, and then you've got ADF there as well. And then if you want to listen to the various um, radios, you've got a row of buttons here, and then you've got your transponder underneath. Um, next up, you've got your this kind of um, icon here. So you've got your 2D panels down here, obviously. <laughs> I forgot to mention that earlier. But you've got your uh, sort of your main landing gear lever here. Uh, you've got your indicator lights. Now, I believe in the real aircraft, these are your auto brake settings, but you cannot click on these buttons uh, in this plane. But I think you can enable the auto brake with that switch, but you just cannot select sort of if you want low, a low level of braking, a medium or a maximum level of braking there. Uh, next up, this is a, actually a, co a cool little panel. Uh, the second to last one there will bring up a fourth uh, display. Um, I believe in the aircraft or in the real aircraft, it's actually down near the centre pedestal, so it'll be underneath this display. But uh, this one actually gives you several pages of information that you can read through. So by default, it gives you an engine display, and you can see it's a bit more um, goes into a bit more detail than the the standard display here on the main panel. But then you've got buttons along the bottom to change the pages, so you can look at the bleed air system, uh, cabin pressure so the air pressure within the plane, uh, APU information, hydraulics, fuel and flight controls so if I move the flight controls you can see all of that moving there and then speed brakes as well and then finally the last button just simply gives you uh, an analog clock down in the bottom left corner there uh, so that's about everything for the 2D version of the panel we'll have a quick look at the 3D one here um, so you can see that there's really there's a lot of sort of blank space almost within um, within this cockpit. Uh, you've got your two sort of center uh, well, panels there. Um, you've got your flight control computers, which uh, you cannot use in this. Uh, in the center, you've got obviously your throttle quadrant. You've got your uh, radio stack here, which is mirrored on both sides. Uh, engine start switches, speed brakes. Um, and then the only other thing to note is your overhead panel. Uh, it's all of your sort of functions are there, but there, some of them are in slightly different locations. You've got a few extra panels here, like uh, oxygen systems and that. Uh, your battery and electrical systems in the centre, whereas on the 2D panel, I think it was down in the bottom left corner, if I remember correctly. Um, I might be completely wrong though. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, the Airbus A321. So. Uh, I also have a quick look here. You can see that the uh, controls are quite unique in this plane because they have joysticks on the sort of side of the cockpit rather than the yoke uh, st sitting in front of the uh, the pilot seat there. So uh, it's a cool plane all around. It's as I said, it's a much more modern plane compared to um, to a Boeing. Uh, it's a very different sort of design philosophy uh, within the Airbus planes. So um, it's quite quite cool to learn it and mix it up. To be honest, I used to be a Boeing fan a lot of the time, but I think I'm going to try and learn the Airbuses as well, um, and I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But anyway, regardless, I'm rambling now. Uh, that's all for this video. In my next video, it's going to be my last cockpit guide that I'm planning for the time being, and it's going to be on the Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747. So I hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.